I want to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you're calling in from. I um, am very excited to be here today and share with you the techniques that we have found make a huge difference in building a sustainable organization. I will pass through this quickly. This is just a summary of uh, what our um, administrator for the session talked about, about my experience. I think it's, it, it's worth noting here that I do have a computer science degree, and I think I used it for about 35 seconds after graduating when I realized that my true passion was helping people create change and have found myself doing that ever since. So I'd like to start with some good news as we talk about PMOs. And when I say PMOs, uh, many of you guys uh, are project managers or change agents in your organization. The things I'm going to talk about today apply to you whether you are building a PMO or a strategic change office, transformation office for your organization, or if you are a change agent at being a program manager or project manager within an organization. All of our techniques and no-nonsense approach really drill down to the heart of what it takes to create sustainable change. So this applies to every one of you that are on this call. With that said, there are some interesting data that we found recently, and it was presented well in the PMI Pulse of the Profession study that was released uh, last year. 70% uh, of organizations now, which is a huge jump from only a handful of years ago, 70% of organizations now have a PMO or a strategic change office. That's huge. That shows us that PMOs are starting to be recognized as an opportunity for organizations to create change. The challenge we found, though, is that only about a third of them are fully realizing their potential to contribute business value according to the executives that were polled in this survey. So in my mind, being a glass, full, a glass half full kind of person, I see that as a huge opportunity for improvement, and it really sets the stage for what we're going to talk about the rest of today. We, what we will do is we will start with the building blocks as we see them, the type of a PMO for your organization, the lowdown on methodologies, our take on methodologies, which tools actually make a difference, and then we get to the fun stuff, which um, talking about talent, change leadership, and alignment with what matters in an organization. We call this the science and the art sides of creating a PMO. And first, we'll start with the science. As, uh, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the challenges that we've seen in organizations over the last many, many years. Uh, building PMOs myself for 15 years or being a part of creating change in PMO organizations, there are some basic mistakes that happen every single time. And I'm sure if many of you could um, could share your stories on this, you would see some of those same same things happening. Uh, first is assuming you actually need one. A PMO is not a one-size-fits-all solution for every challenge in an organization. Determining the type of, of PMO without doing your homework and then forgetting about the people. These are some of the biggest foundational mistakes that we see when we start um, helping organizations figure out how to build a PMO. So let's start with that first one. Do you need a PMO? The first thing, a few fundamental questions to determine where your PMO can actually provide value. What does your PMO solve? Are leaders concerned with time to market? Is brand and industry reputation important? Is technology costing too much to implement? These business challenges should be easily accessible to you by reviewing the mission and objectives of the organization and paying close attention to what's going on around you. The leaders of the organization, once they trust you, will tell you what's really going on. If it's a public company, it's very easy to do your research. You'll find someone that's talking about what is or isn't working in that company on the outside as well as on the inside. And the chances are that that's what's keeping the CEO up at night and that's what he's thinking about or her. Find a way to tie what you're doing to solving the business challenges and the pain points in the organization and you will have found a way to keep your organization relevant. And knowing the business challenges is only half the battle. You really need to understand the, the politics that are circulating around in those upper levels, understand the motivators of the business leaders, the things people are complaining about. The senior leaders are still human beings just like the rest of us. And 
it doesn't matter where they are in their organization. They all have their own personal motivators and objectives that color their perspective on where the real business value is in the organization. With all of that said, one of the first things that I've seen happen in an organization, uh, a C-suite executive will come back from a conference and be all fired up about creating change and say, we need a PMO. And, and the first question I ask is, okay, great, to do what? What are you trying to solve? And oftentimes they say, you know what, I don't know, I just know my competitors have one and I should have one. And unfortunately with that, when we haven't done our homework to figure out where the value really is going to be, then we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. And uh, I've had clients say to me, yeah, I just wanted to, st I, I just got approval to start a PMO last week and I've got my leaders coming around saying, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Really we need to be thinking about what we're trying to solve and a way to ask that question is, what's the P? What does the P stand for here? Are we running a specific project or program? Are we trying to uh, run across an entire portfolio and give governance and oversight to projects that are underway? All of this is important when you're starting to think about what really matters, what your clarity of purpose is for a PMO. thing that you want to think about is the type you actually need. And the most crucial question to ask is, where is the center of gravity in your organization? I have found organizations that, uh, and I'm sure many of you guys have seen this, there's or smaller organizations that may just be an all-hands-on-deck approach and everyone's involved in everything, or some of those other organizations, maybe even the larger ones, that have a very siloed approach to how change is done. Each of those silos operates completely independently and functions uh, in a way where they're making their own decisions within that business unit. And they may or may not have opportunities for crossing different business units. So if you find out where the center of gravity is in an organization, that will help you figure out how you can actually provide business value. For example, in an organization that has a very siloed approach, I would not recommend building a one-size-fits-all enterprise PMO that handles all of the change and projects for your organization. You need to uh, build maybe uh, an organization that has a center of excellence in it or provides governance and oversight, standards and best practices, but maybe you have individual PMOs that are in the business units that are actually addressing the challenges of that particular silo business unit. Whatever you do, you need to make sure that your organization is attention to the signs on the wall with respect to where decisions are made and tries to fake it. You can use one or more of these various PMO types that are generally the standard types in order to create that change. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I have seen is people forgetting to leverage the people around them. Uh, people determine the success or failure of your PMO and any change you're creating, not the process or tools that you put in place. The best advice that I can give is to start with getting to know the culture. What is an appetite for a PMO? A lot of times there's organizations where they have seen this movie before. They've seen PMOs come and go. They've seen them become big, heavy process organizations and it, quote unquote, takes too long to get anything done. That is the poison to an organization that's trying to create change. The best thing you can do is figure out where the appetite is, where there are challenges that you feel you can truly focus and solve problems for, and focus your energy on there instead of trying to take on the world all at once. Figure out where your advocates are and start with them for your change. The other I would suggest is I, I love to put people in categories as a way to figure out how to manage and engage them, right? That's called doing a stakeholder analysis. And w one thing that I've found is there's three categories of how you need to engage people when you're creating change. There's the people that love you, the people that hate you, and the people that just don't care. And those are the obvious ones.